Jesus Christ said, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The one who died for you on Calvary is the one I'm asking you to celebrate tonight. Lift your hands to the Almighty God and bless his holy name. Give him glory, give him honor for dying on the cross for you, for shedding his blood so that you can be saved, for shedding his blood so you can have victory over Satan. Praise him. He's your best friend. He's the one who will be with you through thick and thin. He's the one who will be with you when all is well. He's the one who will be with you when all is not so well. Bless his holy name. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. Magnify his holy name. Magnify his holy name. Worship the King of kings. Worship the Lord of lords. Worship the one who loved you so much that he laid down his life for you. No greater love than this one. Only Jesus Christ who loved you so much that he laid down his life for you. Bless his holy name. This Good Friday, even as we remember that great sacrifice, worship him, adore him. Give him all glory, give him all honor. I say, thank you for loving me, that while I was yet a sinner, you died for me. Oh, I bless your name. I give you all glory, I give you all honor. I give you all adoration. I say, blessed be your name, O Lord. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. Blessed be your name forever and ever, O Lord. Thank you for that great love. Thank you for that great sacrifice. Thank you for being so good, so kind, so loving, Lord. Oh, I, I worship you. I adore you. I magnify your holy name. May your name forever be glorified, Lord. May your name forever be glorified. May your name forever be glorified. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. I want you to lift your voice to him and say, Father, that blood that you shed for me on Calvary, let it speak for me tonight. Let it speak for my family. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Let that blood speak for me tonight. Let it speak salvation. Let it speak healings. Let it speak deliverance. Let it speak victory. Let your blood speak for me tonight. Let your blood speak for me tonight. Oh, yes, Lord. Let that blood speak for me tonight. That blood that you shed at Calvary, let it speak for me tonight. And give me victory. Give me absolute healing. Give me complete and total deliverance. Let it give me victory, physical, victory, mental, victory, spiritual, victory in my home, victory in my marriage, victory in every facet of my life. Let that blood speak for me tonight. Let your blood speak for me. Ancient of days, let your blood speak for me tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
And then with all your heart, I want you to lift your voice to him and say, Father, thank you for peace in Nigeria. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. Oh, Almighty God, thank you for peace. Thank you for peace in Nigeria. Thank you for peace, Lord. Thank you for peace. Almighty God, thank you for peace. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for peace. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for peace in our nation. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. I know, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. I know, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. The King of kings, he liveth. The Lord of lords, he liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. I know, I know my, my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. Jehovah Shalom, he liveth. The Prince of Peace, he liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. I know, I know my Redeemer. I know my Redeemer. I know my Redeemer. He liveth forevermore. I know. Alpha and Omega, the lover of our souls, the one who died on Calvary, the one who shed his blood that we might be saved, the one who took stripes that we might be healed, the one who rose from the dead that we might be justified. The one who ascended to heaven that we might be empowered. Glory be to your holy name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for peace in Nigeria. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you because by your grace, the peace will continue. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, Father, let your blood speak for us. Let your blood speak for our families. Let your blood speak for our churches. And let your blood speak for Nigeria. And before we leave here tonight, Father, let every one of us sing a song of victory. 
Thank you, Almighty God. And all your children who are listening to us all over the world, please, in your own miraculous way, visit them also in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Now I want you to shake hands with three or four people, prophesy to them and say, God will touch you tonight. If you believe that, then say amen loud and clear. God bless you. May please be seated. Um, okay, those who are born in the month of April, please stand up. If you are born in the month of April, let me hear you shout hallelujah. All right, so many of you. My Father and my God, I want to commit all your children born in the month of April into your hands. April is the fourth month of the year. And so I'm asking my Father and my God that for this your children, from the four corners of the world, send help to them. From the east, send help to them. From the west, send help to them. From the north, send help to them. From the south, send help to them. And even from heaven above, send help to them. Give them a new beginning. And let their new year be better than all the previous years combined. Let them serve you to the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. Many happy returns. <clears throat> By the grace of God, in May, if the Lord tarries, we'll have a special Holy Ghost service involving all our workers. And the theme for next month is Fulfilling destiny. Fulfilling destiny. So make sure you invite all your friends, all your relatives. It's going to be an extraordinary Holy Ghost service. Now, also in the month of May, by the grace of God, as we have announced before, I will be leading a group of people to Israel on pilgrimage. Now, those of you who want to go with us, I know you've been told that uh, registration closes at the end of March, but we're going to give you an extension of just one week. If you want to go and you want to put down your names or register, you better do so within the next one week. And not just register, pay in full. So, it's going to be a very, very special pilgrimage. The theme for this year's uh, pilgrimage is In Christ Alone. And it's going to be special because not only are we going to be there visiting various sites, not only will I be teaching you morning and evening, we are having the Holy Ghost service in Israel this year. Uh, having a Holy Ghost service. And the theme for that Holy Ghost service is the unchangeable Lord. So if you are interested in coming along with us, we must have your registration letters by next Friday. The reason is because we need to book accommodation, we need to arrange for the number of buses that will be moving us around. We already have uh, more than 500 people registered, so it's not as if we are looking for a crowd. But I'm giving you this last opportunity within the next one week 
if you register and you pay in full. And even those who have registered, if you don't pay in full within one week, sorry, you won't be able to go with us this year. So if you want to go by next Friday at the latest, you must have registered and you must have paid in full. Okay. How many of you are expecting something special this Good Friday? If you are expecting something special, let me hear you shout hallelujah. I want to thank God for the pastor who spoke before me as a, an evangelist, and he has already done the work of the evangelist, prepared the ground for me. Well, I don't mind telling him that that was a very good job. He did a good job. He did a good job. Um, Mark chapter 10 is the passage I was planning to use, and he chose that one too. He must have stolen it from me somehow. Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to 16. Mark 10, verse 13 to 16. He approached it from the evangelist angle. Maybe I will approach my own from the pastor's angle. The theme for tonight is, Touch me, O Lord. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms put his hands upon them and bless them. Tell your neighbor one more time, God will touch you tonight. Whenever God touches anything, that thing experiences a miracle. If it touches anything at all, that thing experiences a miracle. In John chapter 6, verse 5 to 13, as we discussed, those of you who were here for the Holy Communion last night, John 6, verse 5 to 13, Jesus touched ordinary bread, and the bread began to experience multiplication. The, the, the lunch of a small boy became so multiplied that it fed a huge crowd, 5,000 men, not counting women and children. That's why I am sure that when God touches you today, you will begin to experience multiplication. In Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 15, Luke 7, verse 11 to 15, the Bible tells us the story of a widow who was going to bury her only son. Jesus came along and touched the coffin. When he touched the coffin, the coffin became empty because the fellow that the coffin thought he was going to contain for eternity, got up and walked out of the coffin. I prophesied to someone here today that the coffin the enemy had prepared for you shall remain empty forever. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. The Almighty God touched the oil of a destitute widow. And the oil just kept on flowing. The oil kept on flowing. 
The oil kept on flowing so much that not only was the widow able to pay off her debt, the Bible says she lived on the leftover for the rest of her life. She never knew poverty again. I've told you the story before of a young man, and he's an elder now, sitting somewhere up here, who came to us completely destitute, came for prayers. He said, I, I, I don't know what to do anymore. I, everything is now not just zero, but below zero. And I prayed for him. And God moved me to take the little money I had in my pocket, and I'm telling you it was little, because <laughs> I was poorer than I am now then. But the Almighty God spoke through me as I handed the money over to him. I said, this money will never finish. I've never read about that before anywhere, but it came out of my mouth. Today, by the grace of God, that money has not finished. The man now at least has two houses that I know of. I am decreeing to someone here tonight, my God will touch the money in your pocket. And that money will never finish. So when God touches anything, that thing experiences a miracle. When he touches a human being, when he touches a man or touches a woman, that person experiences at least a miracle. It could be a miracle of healing. Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 to 15. Matthew 8, 14 to 15. The Bible tells us Jesus came into the house of Peter and met the mother-in-law sick of fever. As soon as he touched her, the fever departed. So it could be ordinary fever. <laughs> now I call it ordinary. But those of us who used to suffer from malaria fever, we know that fever is nothing ordinary at all. But Jesus touched the woman and she was healed immediately. Or it could be something even more complicated. Like in Luke 13, verse 11 to 13. Luke 13, verse 11 to 13. The Bible talks of a woman who had a spirit of infirmity. She was bent double. No matter how hard she tried, she could not lift up herself. But the Almighty God touched her. And instantly, she was set free. I thank God for the testimonies we have tonight. If God gives us time, we will hear more. Of that fellow that the doctor said would never walk again because of an accident. And she heard the message on radio. She wasn't even here. She heard on radio that God has spare parts. And if you want a replacement for any part of your body, all you need to ask, all you need to do is ask him. And in faith, on her bed, she asked for a new leg. I woke up the following morning to discover that she, God had already answered. I decree tonight, any part of your body that needs replacement, you will get a new one before tomorrow morning. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, Matthew 8, verse 1 to 3, the Bible tells us that a leper came to Jesus and said, I know you can make me well. You can make me clean if you are willing. The Bible says Jesus touched him. Leprosy then was incurable. But when Jesus touches a leper, the incurable becomes cured. There might be some people here tonight or people listening to me by television or listening by internet or listening by radio. The almighty God who can cure the incurable will touch you tonight. 
I want to remind you of the story of one day years ago when I went to preach in another man's church in Kaduna. And I thought about faith, about my God who can do all things. Let me ask you a question before I go further. How many of you believe that God can do all things? Let me put it in another way. How many of you believe that God will do the impossible for you? If you believe that, let him hear you. Hallelujah. I finished preaching and the pastor said I should go and wait in his office to rest a while while he was attending to other things. And he, he put somebody by the door to make sure that I would not be disturbed. But then a woman came and said, I want to see the preacher. The man at the gate said, uh, why do you want to see him? The woman says, none of your business. I must see him. Anyway, one way or the other, she falls away in. And she said, sir, I want to tell you what I want to tell you because I've never had anyone talk about God the way you have done tonight. She said, I'm also telling you because I know you don't live in this town. So you, very soon you'll be gone. So I have a serious secret I must share. I said, what is the problem? Then she removed, because she, she covered her face, only the eyes were showing. She removed the covering, and I shrank back, because she was a leper. Ah, woman, what, what are you doing here? What? He said, why didn't you send the pastor so they pray for you? He said, I told you. If they pray for me and I don't get healed, when they see me next Sunday, they will say, here comes the leper. Why don't you go to the hospital and say, I have two sons. If I go to the hospital, they send me to the leper colony. But you are not here. You are leaving tomorrow. If you pray and nothing happens, you won't be here next Sunday. And in any case, from what you said about God, I believe your God can do my own. Tell your neighbor, God will do my own tonight. And I prayed a simple prayer for her. I did not touch her. About some months later, I was back in the same church. And as I was coming out of the car, I saw a very beautiful woman, smiling brightly, coming towards me. Hello, do I know you? He said, yeah, you know me. I was the leper, but your father healed me. I didn't touch her, but God did. That God, my God, we touch the incurable here tonight. When he touches a man, the fellow will experience resurrection. The resurrection can be physical, like in Mark chapter 5. Verse 35 to 42. <clears throat> Mark 5, verse 35 to 42. Jairus' daughter was dead. Jesus went in there, touched the girl, and said, Little girl, I say unto you, arise. And immediately she arose. It could be resurrection physical, it could be resurrection of destiny. I mentioned to you earlier on Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 15. Luke 7, verse 11 to 15. The young man, the son of the widow, that was going to be buried, as far as human beings are concerned, had, his destiny was over. And the destiny even of the mother was over. She was the only son. The only son is dead. They were going to bury her, and they were going to bury, as it were, the future of the mother with, with him. But when Jesus touched that coffin, the destiny of that boy was restored. If there's anyone here today that the enemy had already truncated your destiny, 
As God touches you tonight, that destiny will be fully restored. And of course, you know the story in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 37. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 37. It's the story of the Shunammite woman. The Bible says she was a great woman. And she was entertaining the man of God. After some time, she decided to build a house for the man of God. And then finally, the man of God said, okay, what can I do for you? And she said, I needed nothing. But then they discovered that she was barren. And the man of God said, ah, you have a son. She didn't believe, but uh, God has spoken. Thank you, my Father and my God. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight, whether here on this ground or you are listening to me by television or radio or internet, it's not made clear. But your cry is that next time when they bring children, for their special Holy Ghost service in April. You will come with your own children too. The word has gone out and nobody can bring it back. So get ready for your children. So there was this, this Shunammite woman. The man of God said, you are going to have a son. She didn't believe, but God has spoken. So the baby came. And of course, <laughs> she had tremendous joy. And then all of, a day, all of a sudden, a day came when the devil came in and killed the boy. Ah. And the woman said, no. I didn't know I would have this kind of joy. Now I've had it. The devil is not going to take it from me. She cried to the man of God. The man of God came laid on that child three times, and the child came back to life. You know, whenever God touches a man, there is a restoration of hope, a restoration of joy, a restoration of that which money cannot buy. I decree tonight that anything the enemy had already stolen from you, when God touches you today, it shall be fully restored. Some of you will remember the story of one of my covenant partners. And may the Almighty God bless all my partners in Jesus' name. Who have been barren for a long time, and then she became one of my partners, and then she became pregnant and went abroad to register for delivery because she, she wanted to treat that pregnancy with every care possible. And then they did a test and discovered that, uh-oh, the baby in the womb was already HIV positive. And they were going to evacuate. Ah, she said, no, you can't evacuate. <laughs> you are not evacuating anything. She cried to God and said, God, how can this be? I am a partner with your son. She was crying to God in the night, and God spoke to her and said, don't worry, I've already taken care of the situation. And I will give you a sign before you get back to Nigeria. And then, lo and behold, I boarded the plane at Heathrow, and she was there in the same plane. She saw me and then began to scream. I said, aha, this is a sign. This is a sign God had given. Everybody in the first class compartment were wondering what's wrong with this woman who was screaming. Anyway, we prayed a simple prayer. And the almighty God, the one who can reverse the irreversible, not only provided total healing for the baby in the womb, but the husband that infected the baby was healed at the same time. When God touches you today, the healing will be not only for your children, but for the entire family. Yeah. 
when God touches a man, he experiences victory. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46, 1 Kings 18, verse 46. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. The Almighty God said there's someone here tonight. He said, the fire raging in your home shall be put out this week. Thank you, Daddy. Ah, the Lord said that there is a woman here. That there's a huge crisis between you and your children. Daddy asked me to tell you, I will resolve the crisis. Uh, thank you, Father. The Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said, you are very frightened right now. He asked me to tell you, relax. I will take care of you. Now, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46. The Bible said the hand of God was on Elijah. And he outran Ahab in his chariot. The king was riding in his chariot. Elijah was running on foot. And he outran Ahab. When God touches you, he gives you the ability to outrun your enemies. I'm prophesying to someone here today that all those who have been pursuing you all these years will never even see your back again. God touched David. 4 Samuel chapter 17. Verse 34 to 51. 1 Samuel 17, verse 34 to 51. And because the hand of God was on David, he was able to kill a lion, he was able to kill a bear, he was able to destroy Goliath. So when the hand of God touches a man, he gives him the kind of victory that brings total destruction to the enemy. In Judges chapter 15, from verse 14 to 15, Judges 15, verse 14 to 15, the hand of God came on Samson. And in the twinkling of an eye, he was able to wipe out all those who thought they were going to destroy him. Some of you know the testimony of one of my sons. He shared it here. Some people ganged up against him in his place of work because of his Christian standing, and they decided they would eliminate him. And he came to the Holy Ghost service, and the word of God came and said, there is someone here. The enemies have just concluded a meeting to finish you. Long after they are gone, you will still be rising. The following week, all those who had the meeting to destroy him were all retired. And the one they wanted to destroy was promoted. I prophesy to someone here today, even before tomorrow morning, all those who are holding evil meetings concerning you, they shall be disbanded. When God touches a man, he becomes spiritually activated. If God touches you, suddenly the power of the Holy Spirit that is already in you dormant will suddenly begin to function. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Acts 1 verse 8, the Bible says that when you receive power, that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and then you become a witness unto God in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. 
Whether you believe it or not, those who knew me in those days, they knew I was a very shy person. I prefer to just stay quietly with my mathematics. I, for, I don't want anyone to disturb me, so I, I use my mathematics as an excuse for just staying quiet. Then the hand of God touched me when the Holy Spirit came, and I can't keep quiet anymore. Everywhere I go now, I must tell people about Jesus Christ. I am praying for someone here today, too, who has been quiet concerning your faith. The hand of God will touch you tonight in Jesus' name. In 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 11 to 27, 2 Kings 3, verse 11 to 27, the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha and he began to prophesy. You know, how do we know a true prophet? A true prophet of God will tell you things that will happen long before they happen. He will tell you things that will happen that, humanly speaking, will be impossible to believe. And uh, that's why I'm prophesying to someone here tonight. It's going to be well with you. It doesn't matter what the situation may look like now. It's going to be well with you. Now, when we say if God touches a man, he will experience a miracle. The question then comes, and I think I've shared this one with you before. Uh, what happens uh, if God does not touch me, how do I get in contact with him? The Bible teaches that whether God touches you or you touch God, the result is the same. So because we have a huge crowd here tonight and we have several other millions listening all over the world, suppose God wants to touch only one person. How are we going to know who he will touch? Well, if God doesn't touch me, if I go ahead and touch him, we we'll get the same result. So I can be the one who will say, I'm going to touch God. How do you touch God? Well, in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, the Bible tells us about the, weed, the, the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus wasn't looking around praying for people. He was just going and there was a multitude following him. And this woman said, well, I'm not going to ask him to come and touch me, but I go and touch him. And the woman touched the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ and she got a miracle immediately. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 35 to 36, Matthew 14, verse 35 to 36, the Bible tells us that many people came together all saying all we want to do is just touch the hem of the garment of Jesus. And the Bible said as many as touched him were made whole. So one fellow can touch him and receive a miracle. Many people can touch him and they will receive their miracles. So very quickly, because we have to be very brief tonight because of the children. It's a special night for them. How do I touch Jesus? There are various ways you could touch him. One is by faith. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 2 verse 4, sorry, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, he said, the just shall live by faith. The, we, the, the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus by faith. Because when Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? And the woman came and said, I'm the one. Jesus turned around and said to her, woman, thy faith had made thee whole. You can touch Jesus Christ by faith tonight. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 13, Matthew 8, verse 5 to 13, 
the centurion touched Jesus by faith because he said to Jesus, you don't have to come to my house, just speak a word. He said, that's all. And I know that my servant shall be made whole. I remember telling you about a lady who wrote a letter and said, I'm not asking you to come and pray for me. All I'm asking is just read my letter. I know if you read this letter, I will get my miracle and then you will get the testimony. And when I saw that kind of letter, I said, Almighty God, glory be to your holy name for someone with a faith like this. I wasn't surprised then when a couple of weeks later I got another letter from the same fellow saying, uh, I know you read my letter because I already got my miracle. How many of you believe that God will solve your problem tonight, this very night? Let me hear you say amen loud and clear. Another way, of course, by which you can touch God is by giving. In Luke chapter 21, verse 1 to 4, Luke 21, verse 1 to 4, the Bible tells us about the widow who dropped two mites. That was all she had. She dropped all she had in the offering box and it, she touched Jesus because Jesus called his disciples together and said, look at that lady. She touched me by her giving. She didn't have much. She had little, but she touched Jesus Christ. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6 to 15, 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6 to 15, Solomon touched Jesus by extraordinary giving. He gave a thousand bond offerings in one day. He touched the heavens. So much so that the Almighty God came down that night to pay him a visit and said, anything you want, just ask. So you can touch God by giving out of your need or you can give generously like Solomon did. In 2 Kings chapter 4, that I mentioned earlier on, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings 4, 8 to 17. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. And the Lord says, there's someone here tonight. He says, somehow you know it. It's not no prophet told you, nobody, but somehow you know it, that the plan of God for your family is a very big one. He asked me to tell you, whoever you are, I will bring it to pass. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17, that great woman of Shunem touched God by persistent giving. She started by giving food to the man of God and went ahead to providing the house for God until God said, all right, you touched me, now I will respond. Persistent giving. How else can I touch God? By relentless prayer. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46, to 52. Mark 10, verse 46 to 52. The way blind Bartimaeus was able to touch Jesus Christ was because she just kept on, he just kept on crying. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. She, I mean, he refused to stop until God said, all right, go and bring him. I'm praying for someone here today that your persistent prayer over the years will get results tonight in Jesus' name. In Matthew 15, verse 21 to 28, Matthew 15, 21 to 28, that woman whose daughter was uh, being tormented by the devil also penetrated through to Jesus Christ because she refused to stop crying 
for mercy. The disciples said, Lord, send her away. She's disturbing us. She kept on crying. She said, God, just have mercy on me. Jesus said, I can't give the bread of children to dogs. She kept on crying until she got a miracle. Many a times, we stop short of our breakthrough because we pray for just a little while and then we stop. No, God wants you to pray until the final result will come. And for someone tonight, that final result will be here this evening in Jesus' name. <laughs> Finally, how can you touch God? By abundant praise. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 14 to 16. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 14 to 16. David was praising God. He was dancing. He was praising God like little children would do. Even though he was a king, he was dancing, he was, I mean, his praise was robust. So much so, the Bible said his belly came out of his uh, uh, gown or, or, or dress. And the wife looked down from the, from the window and said, look at the king dancing like an ordinary common man. Well, he told the wife, he said, you haven't seen anything yet. The one who made me a king is the one I'm dancing for. He said, and I will dance much more. And if you see the way God responded in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8 to 20, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8 to 20, God said to David, you will always have someone to sit on the throne because of the way you praised me, you touched me. So you can touch God by faith, you can touch him by giving, you can touch him by relentless prayer, you can touch him by abundant praise. I had a testimony just this week. The someone who had been sick for a long time suddenly had a vision. And the Almighty God showed him a scale, you know, the kind of scale that uh, if, you, if you see the, the, the picture of uh, in, in the front of any court of justice, you see a scale, one side here, one side here. And in that scale that he saw, one part of the scale was down on the ground, loaded. The other side was up in the air. And God spoke to the fellow and said, you see that scale? It represents you. One side is full of prayers. The other side, which should be of praise, is empty. And God said to her, when your praise balances your prayer, you will get your healing. So she said, is that, when she woke up, she knew this is an extraordinary visitation from God. She said, no problem, God. I will stop praying for now. I will praise you until the prayer section balances the prayer section. For two days and two nights, she did nothing other than praise God. And all of a sudden, she discovered she was instantly made whole. I'm praying for someone that tonight your praise will balance your prayer in Jesus' name. Now, when God touches children, they become blessed. In the text that we read, Jesus said, let the children come unto me. The, the pastor spoke before me, I had already explained that to you. Forbid them not. Thank God he's done that one for me too. For, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And I like that point that he made. <laughs> the kingdom of God belongs to children. You don't treat them well. They won't let you come in. You so say the kingdom is our own. They belong to us children. Then finally when these children came to Jesus, he carried them in his arms and blessed them. 
whenever Jesus touches a man or a woman or a child, that fellow will be blessed. But then many a times, the major difference between a child and an adult is that the child is innocent. I think the, 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 the pastor who prayed before me told you that one too. There is no sin separating between them and God. And so when God wants to touch them, nothing stands between the hand of God and their head. You know, there's this passage in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. He said, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot see, neither is he heavy that he cannot hear. He said, but your sin, your iniquities have separated between you and your God that he will not hear. In other words, it is sin that is hindering the blessings of God in the life of we adults. The reason the children get their own blessings so easily is because they know no sin, they are innocent, by the grace of God they are pure, so when God wants to touch them, the hand touch will touch the head straight away. That's why tonight you need to pray a prayer. Even if you are already born again, you need to pray a prayer. That any sin that can stand between me and the blessing of God tonight, the Almighty God will please wipe it away. And then, if you are not even yet born again, you need to come to Jesus so that the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away your sin, and the hand of God will be able to reach your head without any obstruction at all. So if there's anyone here tonight and you are not yet born again and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to come from 1 to 15 because I can see that some of you are very, very far away. But you must be here before I say 15 so that I can pray for the salvation of your soul so that the blood can wash away any sin that can stand between you and the touch of the Almighty God. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, you better begin to come now, as I'm counting. One. Two. Three. Four. Sin is the insulator that can prevent the hand of God touching your head. Come. Let the blood of Jesus wash away your sin. Come and surrender your life to him. Let him save your soul. And then there will be nothing to stand between you and the hand of God. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 
Eleven. Thank you, those of you who are clapping. Whatever you touch will prosper. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Those of you on the way, keep coming. Don't wait. I mean, just make sure you get here before I finish praying. So all of us in the front and those who are coming, talk to the Almighty God and say, please, save my soul. Wash away all my sins with your blood, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Please, Lord, anything that can stand between me and your touch, wipe it away with your blood tonight and I will serve you for the rest of my life. And the rest of all, let's pray that prayer for ourselves too. Anything, Lord, that will stand between me and your touch tonight, any sin whatsoever, any acts of disobedience, my Father and my God, please wipe it away with your blood. Those of you in front and those of you on the way, ask him, please save my soul. Give me a new beginning. Let your blood cleanse me from all my sins. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. I will serve you for the rest of my life. Let's talk to the Lord for a moment. And please let all the counselors come around very quickly so that you can deal with this crowd tonight. Counselors, let's begin to move forward. Cry unto him for one more minute, Lord, have mercy on me. Wash me clean with the blood that you shed at Calvary. Please don't let anything stand between me and your touch tonight. Don't let anything stand between me and your touch tonight. Everything that can be an isolator that can hinder you from touching me, Father and my God, please let your blood wipe it away tonight. Let your blood wipe it away tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I want to bless your name one more time. Thank you for the power mighty that is in your blood. I'm praying especially for those who have come forward to surrender their lives to you tonight. Save their souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your blood wash away all their sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Write their names in the book of life in Jesus' name. Amen. Give them a brand new beginning tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. From this moment onward, each time they call on you, Lord, answer them by fire in Jesus' name. 
Father, I'm also praying for everyone here tonight, everyone crying to you that you will wash us clean. Anything that can stand between us and that miracle touch of yours, please wipe it away with your blood in Jesus' name. At the end of everything tonight, let every one of us have recourse to glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, I want to congratulate those of you who have come forward to give your life to Jesus. I want to assure you that by the grace of God, from now on, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. Uh, see some counselors. Uh, counselors, will you move a little faster, please? God bless you. They will give you some cards, which you will fill very quickly, and return back to them. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Uh, as soon as you have filled the form, and you can go back to your seat, and we'll wait till you have finished before we proceed any further. Uh, while they are doing that, I think the rest of us will just keep on worshiping God, singing that, the various songs we can sing about the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, because there is power mighty in that blood. Over to you, brother. 